Oh, you have there. I'm Yuki. Oh, okay. But what's this? It's a it's a circle. What is it? This is technology. I wonder what nefarious activities will occur with this. What are we doing today? I am making coffee and showing off the new technology that Brian funded. It's very self-explanatory once so I get to showing what I do with it. This technology works better with the with a conical. It's gonna be a ultra light coffee that you know one of the Bay Area stronghold owners. <laughs> roasted. Oh, I gotta tear it later because right now I'm gonna turn on the technology. It's a table turning, t table turning technology. You seen this shit? <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, there's no water. Yeah, that one has water. Okay. We do. I'm so freaking high up now. <laughs> yeah, no, no, we we ran out of battery power. Well, it, it doesn't stay on because there's there's not enough current. Oh, look at this wind. <laughs> I got the wind affecting my weight already. Just get good. Yeah, I'll, I'm good. I'm already good. All right, so why am I doing this? One, I'm lazy, and this is where I'll tie that. And then, okay, so I'm just gonna do my standard four pour recipe. First one is the bloom, of course, 60 grams for, and I'm not gonna know WDT, WWDT. I'm gonna go for the bloom. So the the benefits of this is obvious, right? Like, yeah, I don't have to I don't have to rely on human error for brewing. And this works really well on conical drippers like this cafe. Well, like you, you you might be wondering why I said this is best on a conical. Uh, this will be illustrated when I start doing like a constant pour. I'm just waiting for the bloom right now. Um, there is a very specific reason because of how you pour water affects this and then you'll see that like uh like the the chaff will be on the top of my of the bed after so like, i'm gonna start to pour here i start it's about like a five millisecond pour and if you can i don't know if this shows but you'll see where that that where the other side of the stream is ending it's like going through this way we have a graphic that We'll put, actually, we'll probably be the thumbnail of this video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you see the water goes this way, like a... A U, like yeah. Like a U. So, like, when I try doing that on a flat bottom, it doesn't go that way. So this ensures the most even of extraction. Right, because there's directionality of this. Because if I start, if I go in the center, right, it doesn't quite... You can see actually see where it changes. Yeah, so he's pouring off to just slightly off center for so, that like, U shape. So trying to get the maximized agit like even agitation. What does this do in terms of taste? Does it taste better? Of course, because it's even now, right? right. Okay. Peak <laughs> this is peak technology. <laughs> I'm brewing ultralights. All these people judging this man <laughs> behind him. But as you see, all he has to do is pour in one area and, and it's even agitation. And high, high agitation too. And then I'm done. So it's very easy. You know, like, one, right? why buy an X Bloom <laughs> when you can buy a $10, $20 turntable? Why get a poor steady? Why get a poor steady when I'm the poor steady? <laughs> Why add a big machine in a shop when you already have pour over machines that you hire? <laughs> found a way to convert or steady to manual. <laughs> Does this spinning affect um, the dry down time? Have you played around with this spinning versus not spinning? You know, I just use it when I feel like it. <laughs> you need a but, but like the, the, RPM turntable. Well, so we, this does have variable. Well, like it does have oh, yeah, yeah, different RPM. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I can go actually okay. a change the speed. Oh, that's not, that was the fastest. That was the fastest. I was going to say, what if you like centrifuge it so fast that it channels? Yeah. Or what if you but osmotic flow this? Even channel, I don't know. It was kind of well, but then, and then you can go, you know, if you really wanted to, you can mid brew, you can just change the direction. Oh, there you go. <laughs> oh, there you go. No, back and forth. Like, oh, but look at the, the shape. Shape. Your, your fines and all of that have. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> This this will be your advanced technology here. Imagine like if Brian used this technology for his we'll say recipe, you know? I, like, it might it might taste worse. It might taste <laughs> better because No, but um so like what have you observed uh aside from this? Like if we I were don't know. slightly more serious. I mean I don't 
know about the taste preference, but like theoretically, it should be more even and yeah. Attractive. And then the fines do are all pushed up to the top. Well, that's also because I asked. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. This is a pretty fine coffee. I ground really fine for this. Probably too fine. I did, I'm not even dialed on it. Yeah, maybe. you're a little fine because it's, it's okay. It's an ultralight coffee. I said my but, but look, it's like you can kind of tell where how like it dug the bed, right? Yeah, it would, it would do well, this. You're trying to illustrate the concept, so we yeah. ground uh, definitely very fine for this. It, we, we, can taste, we can taste it and see if it's any good. Of course, it's gonna be good. It's, it's a by you. Why like, brewed by me? Ooh! Imagine the coffee oh, nice. carry. Imagine just having good coffee and it tastes good regardless of how you brew it. I'm like wearing sunglasses because it's freaking bright today. I mean, it tastes fine. This was a, this is a very light coffee though. Oh, but I can tell like this is relatively low agitation. Like, cause you're just pouring uh, in one area. Cause this doesn't taste like, you know, any, this tastes like very balanced. It tastes even. It tastes, it tastes even, right? It's very even. It tastes boring. It tastes too, per it tastes too good. It's too perfect. There are no dynamics. No. Oh, this is a technical brew. I mean, I could have poured higher. It's just like hard to, like it's such a high pl platform right now. Mm -hmm. I can't, I usually pour higher. <laughs> And, you know, at my home setup, I'll be coarser, actually, just to, like... Yeah. Well, but, you know, we're trying to demonstrate advanced technology for you all and provide you guys with the bad ideas. Yeah. <laughs> so, this actually tastes super even. It's too perfect. It's, it tastes even to me. It is even, yeah. But nothing really stands out. See, it's too, it's too even. It's too perfect. <laughs> You got rid of the reason why we use conicals. I, I, it's like I'm like a classically pe trained pianist that's a robot, you know? Like, <laughs> you're the MIDI file. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it tastes good. Like, oh, you know, this yeah. is, it's just even, it's perfect. Oh my goodness. Look at that latte. Yeah, your yeah, brew has soul. no soul. Like, try doing that yourself. Yeah, on paper, and what we've been tasting is, it tastes just incredibly even. It's super balanced, super sweet, too perfect. Theoretically speaking, right, we have our cones like this. So if your water is doing this and it's evenly like agitating around because the turntable is spinning, then all of the coffee grounds like in this triangle cone thingy should be properly agitated, extracting very evenly. And that's what that first brew tasted like. Of course, this is a fun idea. And should you do this, you don't need to. You don't need to. You absolutely don't need to. Uh, we're just bored and we're having fun. Uh, but if you did want the turntable, it is linked in the description. I think this was like $8. It was like 10 bucks for a turntable. So it's, it's, it's a lot of fun you can have for $10. So like, would you recommend for the first brew, first pour, I actually do circle pours or can I just pour in the center? Oh, oh, first one? Right oh. oh, since you're pouring really fast, you should actually do a circle pour. Okay. It won't, spin, it won't turn fast enough. Okay, well, that's because we cheaped out on the turntable and we could have gotten a faster turntable that spins faster. Okay, there's 50. I, I think even spinning this does already do some of that agitation, I guess. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think so. I think it's really like the, after the bloom, all that happens. But you know, I could just take a wet WDT and stick it in the center and that would uh, also effectively do everything there. It is a little windy outside, so I'm going to pour like what off to the center there. Oh, wow. Hey, that's pretty good. It's pretty satisfying. I think the most... Just... And I can pour it faster too. Uh, but look, that, that looks like if I was to do uh, an actual like circle pour and try to do to try to do that there but it looks like we're getting i mean we are getting that i mean that looks pretty flat too maybe because it's also spinning so it's evening out each of the pores nice and gentle agitation throughout the, uh, and i'm pouring system. like slightly off in the side there so you can really see how you it gives you time to like understand what your kettle is doing to the yeah to the bed this is uh, going a lot better than what I expected. <laughs> Wait, why do you have doubts? No, I, I mean, you know, you, I never, you never actually sent me a video of what you were doing. You sent me beautiful drawn images of this. But in practice, this actually kind of works. You can see where the stream is actually uh, is going on the other side, and you can see that it is agitating. You can clearly see, uh, especially with the, the, the bubbles and the off gas, you can clearly see the stream goes in and then up, right? It's like a, it's like a U 
shape in the in the cone. You know, on paper and in practice, it actually works. Grinding uh, super fine. We are grinding very fine. Grinding fine does demonstrate to you what this is supposed to be doing. I just think this is hilarious. <laughs> We're not the first ones to ever try this out. We saw some of the Indonesia guys try. It. Oh yeah, yeah. There are always these guys in uh, SCA that'll uh, push the push the barrier even further. But we just want to show you guys what exists uh, out there. Uh, but it you know it does work, and you know I can actually see it does push all of the weird stuff, like all of those fines and all of those those like bad tasting bits up to the front. Well, the chaff is ground too fine, so but when I well, you can still see the chaff does get pushed up into the edges yeah. there. You get a lot of the chaff to go up instead. Usually when I grew without this. Your chaff is like in the it's in the like brew. Oh, okay, yeah. Right? So I think the reason why, like, if you look at Harry's brewing style, he does brew like lower agitation. So I think that makes sense for me. I brew hot, heavy agitation. This is kind of like in between, which is hilarious. Is like we're we're getting that chaff pushed up, we're getting the fines pushed up, but it's like less than if you were to full kettle tilt and kind of in between that that oh, yeah. slower lower agitation. It is done. Let's give it one more check. Let's check. Yeah. So it's like you can clearly see like it's not the flat, but it's like it's been yeah. It, I mean like it's been dug. It's been yeah. You know, we'll, we'll give it a taste if you do invest in the advanced technology. And this is, it's kind of lame. At least it has a USB C, but it, you can you can have triple A's. Yeah, you can run out triple A's. I mean, you know, this is a, ch a ch very cheap turntable. So this is the lager that Moonwake has. We're very familiar with this coffee. <laughs> Ah, this is the most technical brew I've ever had from this is on. this is a this is a very technical brew. It's it's actually the Sadidi's presenting a like step by step. Maybe. Yeah. So I don't like this. <laughs> It's not interesting, right? Like to me, this is like high clarity, balanced. You have can pinpoint every single flavor note in the coffee. The acidity is like going places, but you know, for me personally, you guys know how I brew. It's like, I, I'm, I'm not a big fan of this style of brew, but I do think, I mean, I think most people like this style of brew. It tastes like Letty. <laughs> you know, no, this does taste like Letty. Um, but it is very, very complex. It's high clarity. There's a lot of definition in this, but it's boring. I'm, I'm a hater. Very balanced, very sweet, very high clarity brews. And you accomplish that with some of that lower agitation and obviously even agitation. I'm a big fan of manual, uh, ev manually agitating stuff. This is like kind of in between that, where, but it's still veering more towards that like max clarity, low agitation brew, so. I mean, the bottom line is like, yeah, it produces a very like, uh, balanced brew, but you can also just do this if you're really good with a kettle. Like, yeah, yeah, like you don't need to, to like, get a turntable turn, turn for this, but I think this is a very fun, like this was fun to do. Yeah, um, I think it was very interesting for it to illustrate, cause like usually if you're like, um, using your kettle, you don't and circle pouring. You don't. You don't see that. Yeah, you don't see the actual like extraction happening uh, visually yeah. as easily with like a U shape agitation like this. Mm -hmm. To me, this does get rid of a lot of what people sometimes li like or dislike with uh, uh, conical drippers. Is like that actual unevenness. Is like I think that unevenness, depending on how you present it, it, it could taste interesting, could taste fun, taste dynamic. Uh, but oftentimes, like that is the source of people's inconsistencies. So people don't like that, or you. Know, you, know, you literally get uneven extraction, but that's also why people like it. Like this does give you, let you control how even you want things to be. Cause like you have to start thinking about this too, is I could just turn on and off the turntable in the middle of my brew. So say I want the first part, the first few pours to be insanely even, I could do that. And then the rest I can, you know, pour in circles. So you now have maximum flexibility in what you're trying to do with the advanced technology here. So, uh, you know, I think it's fun. Yeah, Those, yeah. Let us know if you yeah. try it out. Um, we, we, you know, obviously we went from like, we poured from, uh, I'm gonna use this as a, mm -hmm. we poured on like this side and it went this way. Maybe we should pour on like the other side. Yeah, then it goes this way. You know, it, it's At, like a reverse instead. Yeah, so like you, there are a lot of different combinations in terms of how you can control the direction. And then also uh, the higher end turntables also have variable speed. So, you know, maybe th this speed will, will matter a lot more, right? I mean, it does matter in terms of like, actual agitation. <laughs> pour over is weird, but this is like another tool to help kind of demystify that. Although like we did buy it for meme purposes. Um, but yeah, you know, it's another tool you could use. It's like 10 bucks. 
half so a it's fun. And we, you know, implement it on the slow bar and get three of them. And now yeah, yeah, yeah. If if somebody needs to implement this, maybe Harry will be the one to implement this in a real professional setting. But uh, this is the the goofy ideas that we have here on this channel. So yeah. All right. Thanks for watching. See you guys later. Let us know what you think. Fun idea. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye.